Now we come to the third part of the lecture on the deep determinants of economic growth, and this part deals with culture. Overall, culture in terms of uh, values or norms uh, can have a variety of different effects on economic growth. For example, um, one of the hypotheses in this context that have been argued to be valid is that uh, certain cultures or religions might foster the affinity towards hard work, and of course, uh, this could affect economic development. Or you could have a culture that is open towards new ideas, and that of course fosters innovation and therefore technological progress. Or uh, you can have cultural traits that foster saving and the accumulation of assets. Also that could foster uh, economic growth, as we've seen, because that's also one of the proximate causes of economic growth. You can have cu a culture that uh, fosters education or impedes education, and of course this can have um, uh, repercussions on economic growth. Or the trust in a society for the um, functioning of contracts and the judiciary and so on and so forth, and um, most broadly social capital, the networks that you can establish. All that can have effects on economic growth and uh, similar to institutions, culture only changes very slowly. So Feuchtländer and Ford, for example, in 2012 have shown in a paper published in the Quarterly Journal of Economics that actually anti-Semitism in the Middle Ages, so from 1348 to uh, 1350, is very strongly correlated regionally with anti-Semitism in uh, 1920 to 1945. So this would actually again imply that perhaps a culture is not so much affected by economic development as it is the other way around. And um, yeah, there are lots of credible ideas for why culture should matter for economic growth. I would like to focus on one very important paper in this context, and that was written by Becker and Wössmann in 2009, Was Weber Wrong? A Human Capital Theory of the Protestant Work Ethic. And Becker and Wössmann start with the observation that Protestant countries or regions generally have a higher living standard than non-Protestant countries or regions. And there are basically two explanations for that. One is the famous hypothesis by Max Weber that it is actually the Protestant work ethic that is important. The reason is that Protestants see hard work as a path to salvation, therefore they work harder and this should lead to faster economic growth and higher living standards. Becker and Wessmann, however, argue that there is also another channel that is important, and that is actually through human capital accumulation and education. The reason is that um, the Protestants were required to be literate because they had to be able to read the Bible. And this leads to a better level of education and should lead to faster economic growth. In this context, of course, there is again the problem of uh, causality. So you could also have the situation that uh, richer regions can just invest more in education and human capital accumulation for the population. So again, you have to instrument actually um, education or Protestantism in this context to test these two theories against each other. To address the issue of causality, Becker and Wössmann come up, in my opinion, with one of the best instrumenting strategies in the economics literature, and that is that they um, estimate the effect of the share of Protestantism on economic growth in German regions and uh, instrument the share of Protestants in uh, these regions by the distance to Wittenberg. Wittenberg was uh, where Martin Luther proclaimed his uh, thesis and started the Reformation towards uh, Protestantism. And indeed, if you look at um, the map in Germany and the share of um, Protestants in the different regions, particularly historically, there is a very strong correlation between distance to Wittenberg and the share of Protestants. So this is then actually the first condition for a good instrument that the first stage is strong. 
and that is um, arguably the case. And in addition, the second one is that the exclusion restriction has to be fulfilled. And here one can reasonably argue that nothing else in economics is actually influenced by the distance to Wittenberg. So the exclusion restriction is uh, very likely to be fulfilled. And with this instrument that has a strong first stage and um, the fulfills the exclusion restriction, the authors actually find a causal positive effect um, of literacy that is driven by the share of Protestantism on economic growth. And they also find a separate positive effect of Protestantism itself on economic growth. So they argue that both pathways are important. So the one that uh, runs uh, through the hypothesis of Max Weber with uh, the work ethic, the Protestant work ethic, that they work harder. And the second one that they came up with, that it is important to be able to read and uh, have a good education for economic growth. And both of these channels matter. That's what they found out by their contribution. To summarize, this indeed shows that culture here in the form of Protestantism, can have very strong effects on economic growth through various channels.